Hi, I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. Our family has been blessed to farm in Montana for over a hundred years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior, Jesus Christ. So I don't know why Tony had to go clear to Alaska. I mean, you know, we got great fishing right here at home. But, you know, we can go to the garden and get worms. I'm, I'm ready. But we did have another nine tenths of rain and high winds. No hail this time. So that's good. Boy, I sure hope I catch something. Hey everyone, welcome back. Well, I just got back from an awesome time in Alaska fishing with some buddies. If it's not on your bucket list, put it on your bucket list and go do some fishing. It was a riot. There's a bee on my hand. Oh, now he's gone. Anyways, uh, while I was gone, they didn't get much hand done because we had over three inches of rain scattered throughout the whole week here at the farm. Crops look really good. I'm going to go take some parts over for Tim. He's over swathing. I'm going to go check some crops on the way. Nacho took off. He's gone for a week too. He gets to go do some exploring. And I get to take over his swather for a couple days. And like I said, we're learning. It's been a long time since they've been in a swather. So. But we're getting there. Welcome to the school of Hard Knocks. Best teacher ever. just like you know that sometimes in life it is the small things because in all relativity all relativity English that is a small rock but that small rock caused a lot of headache for a good 20 minutes so um I am accepting donations and I will ship this rock to Thai Bitter if y'all want it. Let me know. Well, I'm out looking at uh, crops and stuff here. We had some hail uh, a couple nights ago. Did a fair amount of damage to the barley. Definitely have some, some heads that are missing kernels. Also got the oats here across the road. Winter wheat seemed to handle it a little bit better, but you can just tell on the oats here. Kind of got a white tint to it. That's just hail damage. The other end of the field doesn't. But for the most part, not too much damage. We're gonna get this barley adjusted. This was gonna be grain barley, but we might end up paying it. We'll just see how, how it all comes out on the hail adjustment. There's still quite a bit of grain there in spots. I'd like to combine some for grain, but there's also demand for hay, so we'll see. Got some hail damage in the winter wheat here. Man, they're nice looking heads. Huge heads, but kinked over there. They, I don't know, they're still got color. They might fill. But look at the oats across the road. Really got beat down. So we're gonna wanna get that swath through over here as soon as possible and get this swath. We can still maybe pick up some of that, get some of those tons back. But between that and the grasshoppers moving in, we gotta get this crop picked up. So that's probably 
the worst sickle section to have to change. Because you're right on your head, so you're smashed in between. It's tight, you have to take this guard off. Not a whole lot of fun. But the trick to it is you take your two bolts out that are holding the section, and this was the one that was in there, it was broken. And it started pushing dirt on me because it wasn't cutting, it was pulling. So take your two bolts out here, knock them completely back, loosen the two beside it, then take your guard off, drop it out of the way, and you can work that back and forth enough and eventually pulled it out and just slid the new one in and put it all back together. So now we're back to going here. Hopefully we're not pulling again. We're cutting alfalfa, not pulling. It's like good hay for competition horses. Makes them jumpy. Doing that backwards thing again. Sure does feel goofy going backwards in a swather like this. Well, I got the swather to the yard here, washed off all the bolts just because haying is completely different than grain harvest, where the grain harvest does a good job of cleaning, out, cleaning off all the bolts and nuts and everything. Eric's here, we're ready to start turning to this. We pulled the sickle sections all out, pulled the whole sickle out. We're gonna start replacing all the poly underneath that's wore out. So, what do we got to put on though? We have our brand new mailless cut of our skid shoes for the Macdon D FD F1s, Case IH 2100 series, uh, New Holland uh, 82, um, 83, 86C series. They look thicker. They're, they are thicker um, compared to the competition out there. You can see how much thicker we are. Oh yeah. Here's another competition. See how much thicker we are. Yup. And even thicker than the factory ones. We are thicker than the factory. Not, not only along the bridge point, uh, what's going to take the most wear, but where you put your carriage bolt through. We are thicker here, less chance of that backside spidering out and losing that shoe. And for a header like a hay head that's always on the ground, we'll put these to the test. We'll put them to the test. See how, see how they do. The ones on here right now are really chewed up. Some of them are missing because we talked about the fronts being too weak on the factory ones. So we'll know in time. They look really good to me though. We're excited about it. Yeah. Long so, time coming, right? Been a long time coming, so <laughs> we've been at this, uh, working on this for quite a while. So, all right, let's let's get it done. So we'll get, get back to swathing. All right. Everything's removed down to just the metal cutter bar. Time to put some new ones on. Here's, uh, here's some of the expired ones compared to a new one. I think we got the full life out of that uh, one. What I do you think, think she's, uh, yeah, about 100% of it. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, all new cutter bar, ready to go. Uh, sickle sections, Harrison and uh, Dad got that all new sections put on, the ones that were broke. We're ready to take this back outside, put the sections in and go swathing again. Well, good morning. Heading over to do some uh, window turning this morning. Did get the swather all finished up yesterday, did a little test cut. I'm ready to go for today cutting later on. So let's go turn some hay. Oh yeah, and uh, the chance of thunderstorms this evening again. It's July, this isn't normal. We normally get, uh, we usually have a rain by this time of year, but this works, I we'll love it. Well, we've got quite a bit of windrows turned here. I'm actually on some stuff that we threw two windrows together. Uh, thin hay crop, not thin hay crop, but short hay crop. So in the past, we've actually had bigger windrows from a 30 foot pass compared to the two 30 foots thrown together into 60 foot right now. So that side delivery is working really good on a drier year because we can throw those windrows together. This fiber uh, windrow merger is wide enough to grab those two windrows and put it into one. So we can bail 60 feet instead of 30 feet at a time. So bailing will go pretty fast here. They're uh, talking 50% chance of high winds and torrential rain and hail tonight. So not exactly what you want when you got windrows on the ground, but kind of goes to say if you're going to have a good hay crop, you're going to have a cruddy grain crop. If you have a good grain crop coming, you're probably going to have a cruddy hay crop. So. Might get rain on these tonight, we'll see. Might get them bailed up before the storms get here, we'll see. Well, I got probably 150, 160 acres of this field turned this morning, so we're go home and get back in the swather. But, show you guys kind of how this thing works. Big roller, both sides of this drum, or the side of this uh, conveyor belt with the fingers on it, that just picks it right up off the ground. Draper can run either side. Hits these side shields, flips it over. It works pretty good. I, uh, it's a good investment. The regular V rake, wheel rake, just was too much windrow for one of those rakes to flip it over. We tried it. We had a, actually, I bought a Vermeer uh, V rake, hydraulic powered V rake, and it wouldn't do it. So, fiber, dash trailer, bale stacker. They actually, before they got into that fiber dash trailer, they did a lot of haying equipment. And this is something that they actually built more for merging windrows for chopping, but with those side shields they build for it. It works good for inverting the windrow, flipping it over. We're knocking out the acres here in the barley. Looks like it's making really nice hay. We look at that windrow behind us. Oh yeah, no head yet. How could I forget? Really good hay. Um, it kind of got a little dry when it was heading, so it really didn't stretch out much, but still a lot of material in my straw there anyways. So tonnage-wise, I think it's gonna yield up really good. Uh, problem was we had hail at the yard uh, when I was in Alaska, but the south end of this field got chewed up pretty good. I'd say it was harvestable crop in the combine. Somewhere in the ballpark of 80% hail damage, but a lot of the stems are still there, which doesn't make great hay by itself, not the grain in it, but we'll see. We've got at least some strips um, for the crop adjuster, for the hail adjuster to come and do a count and give us an appraisal on what our damage was. So leave that. Maybe they'll be out here the next few days and come back and catch those, or else we'll just combine them when we cut the feed barley around here with the, for grain. Yeah, going good. Well, we have another check strip here. Just a few high hanging heads. Looks pretty good, really, on this end of the field, the north end. I'll show you when we get to the other end what it looks like. A lot different on this end. Most of the heads are gone. Got a hitchhiker here. Somehow the land roller must have bounced over that one. Whew. Yeah, look at that. Not good. Well, I got back to the yard here. 160 acres or so of that field cut, so good start on it. But it's getting blue out west. Man, that thing just looks hideous without a hood on it. Really need to get that uh, fixed this winter. 
Because it ain't gonna happen now during the season, that's for sure. Good night, windmill. <laughs> Just kidding, time to go bail. Throw a few Hi. balls of twine in and away we go. It's kind of hard to do one handed. Good to go. Staying south of us, so that's good. Just smashing hay into into little square bales. No, not so little, I guess. Raindrops. Uh, it's actually not a missed tie. Thin hay problems. Well, that was no good. So it was before. Good wheat crop, bad hay crop. Bad hay crop, good wheat crop. Hard to not get it when rows rained on when your wheat's growing good. It is flat raining here. Crazy. Well, I've had those bronze for over a year now. I know a lot of you guys asked about how they're going to hold up. There is not one stitch loose. Sole is still on really good. No problems there. Laces haven't even wore out yet. Got a pair I wear to town. Amy actually wears them most of the time. And I just got a new pair. I don't make a dime off of these guys. I'm just telling you how awesome these boots are. These ones though are laceless. Slip-ons. Because I hate tying shoes. Because I'm lazy like that. So. There we go. New brunts. Today's the day. Oh yeah. Those are nice. That was almost dried up yesterday. 47 hundreds. Another 4700s, that's awesome. Just not when you're hanging, right? Well, this is a good time to get some bale spears fitted up to the Euro loader brackets that uh, that 145 Maxim has, as well as this. So I found some weld on brackets and dad got those all tacked on here yesterday. Put a brace across the top up there too because we weld at the bottom, it kind of warped everything. So now we're ready to weld and we'll take this over Turn some windrows because it barely sprinkled over there the way it sounds. Well, Harrison, what do you think about the uh, welding? It's hard to see. Is it? Yep. <laughs> well, the other day I got a little start on uh, the prep work for the new building going up here. Uh, it's gonna be 72 wide, 200 long. Uh, we've been waiting for a storage shed for quite a while. And uh, now with that new air drill, we really need it now more than ever. So a few months ago, got that all lined up with the builder. And he's gonna be here, or his concrete crew should be here next week. So 
Gonna get this all leveled off for him for the footings and he'll get ready to pour concrete. Hidden footings dug out. Amy's got a the wall laser leveler checking height there so we don't go too deep. Now I'm drawing the grader. I'm moving extra dirt out of his way.